Welcome back to the channel, guys. It's Wes, the Suburban Viking. I got Dave with me here. We are with, we are from, we are Midgard Axe. How's everybody doing? How you guys been? Hope you had a great weekend, and I hope you're, the week starts out really great as well. Um, have a bunch of axes lined up here, as you can see. I got five axes stuck into some logs I've stacked up so you guys can see them a little easier. Every like six months or so, I'll go through and grab three, four, five axes, and I'll kind of bring them out and give them a rejuvenation. The handles get tore up, they get weathered, and the heads get all beat up. And uh, I like to try to keep up with these axes as much as possible. Now guys, these are my daily throwers, so I don't put a ton of time into them. But for this video, I wanted to give you guys a look at some of the color options you can do with handles, some of the different designs you can put in handles. And I had to do these with these five axes anyway, so I thought, let's make a video on it. Now, all these axes out here, I've done videos on, okay? Um, some I have not got back to to finish the video on because they've just kind of been put up. I've got a lot of axes, guys, that I deal with and I throw on a daily basis. So um, I wanted to try to get back to some of these. But without further ado, let me take you down the line and show you each axe and tell you what I did to it. All right, guys, so the first one up, of course, is the Husqvarna Carpenter's Axe, but this one here is the test design that I did when I was trying to shave off weight and uh, kind of give it a different design here. As you can see, I did a really cool pattern in this handle, um, and what I did was I just took a DA sander with 120 grit, and I kind of just tapped it on the handle. It gave it these, like, indentations, these, like, little... Uh, divots i guess you would call um but man this thing turned out really cool looking um it feels really good in the hand i did shave the handle down just a little bit okay but all in all guys this thing is cool i think it's cool looking and i can't wait to get some color on this axe uh, i think it's gonna look really good next up we got the german throwing axe that i have to uh, on a previous video, I have not touched the head yet. I just kind of sat it on this handle and it's kind of been sitting. I wanted to redo the handle and then in another video, I'll redo all these heads. But uh, this is the handle that it comes with. It's a really cool looking design and I think it's going to make for a really great flyer. I have yet to throw it, um, but I want to redo the handle. I know it's hafted well, so I'm not worried about that. But I think when I get some color on this handle, it's going to look really good. But here's a shot of it. Next up, guys, of course, we got the Rinaldi Carpenter's Axe. I haven't done anything to the handle. I didn't sand it, nothing. I do want to put some color on the handle. I'm interested to see what it's going to look like with the little oval indentations going all the way up the handle. I think it's going to look real slick. Next up, guys, we got another Husqvarna Carpenter's Axe, which is my race axe, okay? This thing had some pretty bad gouges in it from another axe hitting it. And I'll be honest with you, most of the handles that that are torn up on my channel are for me throwing one ax into another ax handle and then they all get shredded. I was able to salvage this handle, so that's cool. Um, I really didn't do anything to the handle other than just sand it down. So I'm gonna put some color on it, see what it looks like, but this is one of my favorite throwers and you can, th for a 20 inch ax, you can throw this thing really hard. And last but not least, we have the Council Tool Flying Fox. Now, what I did on this handle, I did sand it down, but I did give it a few little notches in it like I did on the first axe I showed you. They're not as uh, deep uh, and they're not as present as they are in the first one, but I think once I get some color on it, it'll really pop those ridges out. But all in all, I'm really interested to see what this handle is going to look like because it's got beautiful wood grain on it, and um, I think it's going to take color really well. I do want to tell you guys about a new glove that I found. Some of you may have already seen these. I got it at Lowe's. It's called the Venom Steel uh, Industrial Gloves. These things are great. They're extremely thick. Um, they actually keep your hands warm in the uh, winter. They're so thick. But, man, these things are really nice. They're a tad expensive. But, man, these things are great. It's not a sponsored video. I don't have any sponsors. I just like bringing you guys cool stuff that works. And these gloves are pretty cool. So if you haven't found these, uh, you probably can find them online or at your local Lowe's. But man, these things are great. Try them out. I've chose a different color for each axe. And when I get to each axe, I'll show you which one I've used. For this one here, I'm using the Transtent Brown Mahogany. Okay, I think it's going to look really good with this handle. So uh, let's get some color on it. Guys, I normally use a foam applicator pad, but I don't have any. So I'm gonna use a paper towel that works just as well. 
I will tell you that there's two ways you can apply this stuff. You can mix this trans tint with um, the fuel alcohol and um, it'll kind of dilute it down to where it's not as dark. If you put it on directly onto the handle without that, it's gonna make it really dark. However, when I go back over it with the bull linseed oil, you'll see what happens. Make sure we get it all in there. To get into areas that I can't reach, I'll use a Q-tip. Put some on the Q-tip here. Especially like right in this area. I will tell you guys this. If you get it on your axe head, it will stain it. It's not a huge deal though. All you have to do is just take some alcohol and it'll come right off your axe head. Rub it on there. It'll take it right off. Just make sure you don't hit the handle because it'll take the color off the handle. Then I'll use it up here for the top. Let's move on to the next axe that'll give this one a chance to dry. This is going to be one hell of a video to edit. <laughs> All right, guys, so the German axe here. Uh, I went with a color called Coffee Brown. And uh, this one will spread a lot easier. It doesn't have all those ridges and stuff like that other axe did. So it'll spread. See how much, see how easier it is to spread, guys, on this one? The other one was a pain. This one will go on a lot nicer. Really should have used a foam uh, applicator on that last one. It took up way too much dye doing it the way that I was doing it. But normally I don't have all those ridges in my axes. I normally just do it like this. So I know it almost looks like the same color as the last one, but I'm telling you once I kind of thin this color down with the uh, bull linseed oil, you'll see the difference in the color once it's thinned out. It's just really dark right now, but it won't stay like this. Don't forget about your knob. I don't know about you guys, but I hate when axes have color on them and then the eye's not done with it. it. Drives me nuts. Just a personal opinion, personal preference of mine, but you're gonna add color to a handle. Make sure you do all of it. I'll just do parts of it. Also, if you have any dye that's kind of pulled up, you wanna kind of rub it in a little bit. Um, if not, it'll take longer to dry and then you'll get a little bit of a darker shade. You want to try to get a uniform shade if you can in this uh, part here. Um, so that way it uh, goes on better. If you guys let it dry and then you go back on with some more, it will change the shade of the color. So try to get it all right now while it's still wet. But that's the uh, German uh, throwing axe. And we'll move on to the next one. You don't have to get new gloves every time you move to a different axe if you're doing multiple axes in multiple colors. You can literally rinse your hands off with water and it'll take the dye almost completely off. I do have a little staining here, but it's not gonna transfer to this handle. That makes it kind of cool so that way you don't have to waste, you know, a ton of gloves doing different axes with different colors. All right, so the Rinaldi Carpenter's Axe, I chose a dark vintage maple. This is gonna be really cool color. I love the dark vintage maple. I think it looks really good probably going to take a lot of dye like that first axe we did because of the ridges in it i really guys i would recommend if you have ridges in your handles like this one use a uh, foam brush don't use a paper towel because it does not want to go on very well but guys look at that color i love this color this is probably one of my favorite colors to use is the dark vintage maple and uh once i get some boiled linseed oil on here after this is dried you guys are going to see a different a little bit of a different color but man it's going to look really good you could leave it like this but i'll be honest with you guys and tell you that this dye is finicky so um it's really hard to try to get this exact color but man look at that handle i knew those little ridges would pop and they sure did pop when i put color on it look at that it almost looks like snake skin. Man, that's really cool. I don't know if you guys remember a long time ago, I did a video on trying to make a snake skin patterned uh, ax handle. And I think I may have just figured out how. Um, I just need to figure out how Grand Sporter puts these ridges on their handles. Cause I'm gonna tell you, it's really cool. I really do enjoy these ridges. They're really cool looking, but guys, look at that handle. I don't know if you guys can see that and how well, it's a little dark, but um, man, that thing, Whew, it looks good. So I saw these logs out here and I said, you know what? That'd be easy. Just set them up, screw it. 
but uh you know i didn't take a ton of time thinking about stacking these logs and how wobbly they might be um because i knew this video would be a long video but totally worth it all right the rinaldi carpenter's axe is done let's move on to the next one All right, guys, so this one here, we're not using a dye. We're gonna use a little bit of a burn finish here, followed up with some Danish oil. This is a great finish that anybody can do that's quick and easy to maintain, and it gives you a good look, and um, you know, it's really easy. So let's, uh, let's just jump into it. The idea here is, is I don't wanna stay on the ax handle too long. I don't wanna char it. I just wanna kinda bring out the wood grain a little bit, okay? Kind of bringing out a little bit of that wood grain there. You see the bull linseed oil starting to seep out of the handle. And that's it, guys. I don't put a ton of heat on it. There is some debate out there. Some people say that if you burn your axe handle, you weaken the handle. Some people say that if you burn it, it strengthens the handle. Guys, I don't recommend charring your handle. That's just my opinion. Doing this little bit of a burn, I haven't noticed any weakening of the handle doing this, but that's just my experience. You can try it at your own risk, but I don't think burning it this much is gonna really affect much, but that's just me. Now, because we burned it, what it did was is it brought out some of the wood grain and made it kind of rough. So what I'll do is I'll take some 220 grit sandpaper, okay? And I'll just kind of hit it a little bit and kind of knock those grain down um, so it's not as rough. I don't want splinters in my hand. So I just kind of go through a little bit and kind of just knock down those fibers. I don't want to sand out the darkness of the handle too much, um, but I do want to get it a little smooth. If you get an area that's too dark, like I have a really dark spot here, you can leave it if you want, or you can take the sandpaper and kind of hit it a little bit there lightly going back and forth and it'll lighten up that dark spot for you it doesn't have to be perfect guys these are throwing axes that i use on a daily basis and uh i'm not trying to make these things perfect one wrong throw will ruin all i'm doing so i'm really just doing this to make content for you guys and because i'm interested to see what these colors look like on these different axes so now with this Danish oil, the instructions on the back say that you're supposed to flood the surface for 10 to 15 minutes, then let it dry, and then come back and do it again for another five to 10 minutes. Um, I've done both. Uh, you do get a darker handle if you do it twice, okay? Um, but what I like doing is I like putting it on there real thick, uh, make it, you know, get it really wet, and uh, letting it, you know, just kind of touching it up in the 10 to 15 minutes and then um, letting it dry, of course, and then coming back and doing it again. I think that's the best option, what the instructions say. Um, but it gives you a cool, quick finish, um, and you can touch the uh, wood up with this Danish oil at any point in time. Just do the same thing you did when you first put it on there, and uh, you can keep a nice-looking, you know, dark finish. They make different colors, too. Um, this one here is the uh, dark walnut finish, and... Um, it gives it a darker look. Like I said, the more coats you put on there, the darker it gets. I think this would be a good finish for someone who has a, like a work ax that they use a lot and they want kind of a finish on it, but they don't want any drawbacks from any dye or anything like that. This would be a good finish to use. It gives you that cool, dark, rich, natural, almost natural look. Um, without any drawbacks of, you know, it bleeding on your hands when it gets wet or anything like that. So consider this one. It's a good little finish. And what you can also do too is pour a little bit in your hand. Okay. Kind of let it run on there. And then um, what I like doing is kind of just rubbing it in while the wood's still warm from the uh, burn finish. Kind of get inside the grain there a little bit. Kind of help it soak into the handle and give you a little bit of a darker finish as well. 
you can put it on your handle while it's uh you know room temperature or whatever um i will tell you guys too that sometimes putting finishes on in cold weather and hot weather will change the look it's cold out here today um so i may get a little bit of a different finish than i normally do but um i'm interested to see if it changes at all it may not but i've seen other finishes change in, in different uh temperatures you guys don't have to burn your handle when you do this either you really don't um, I just burn it because it brings out a little bit darker of a, the greens could pop out a little bit more. Uh, they're like more like a black color uh, with the brown. It just, it pops really well together. And that's it for this one. Uh, I will change gloves on this one. Uh, that's oil and I don't want it mixing with that. So I will change gloves on this one, guys. Okay, and last but certainly not least, we have the Council Tool Flying Fox. I am a little concerned about this color. I've only used it one other time. I'm we'll see how it turns out. It is the red mahogany. Sometimes this red, red mahogany can almost turn into a pink. So I'm hoping it doesn't. See you guys, it can almost turn into a pink. So I'm hoping it doesn't do that. Uh, but if it does, then I'll be throwing a pink uh, flying fox. Oh, well. <laughs> All right. So let's put the color on there and see how it takes it and what it looks like when it's done. We'll say this uh, log that it's sitting on is really, really uneven. So let me uh let me just give it a give it some brace it up here. You can start seeing some of those divots that I put in there with the sander when I start putting the color on. Like I said, this this color worries me just a tad. Um, because when it lightens up it may turn a little pink. But let's find out. I got a pink flying fox. I got a pink flying fox. It is what it is. All right, guys, there we have it. It is finished and done. The flying fox with the red mahogany. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add boil linseed oil to this handle. Now, remember before I told you that I didn't thin the trans tent with fuel alcohol. If you don't thin it, you're going to get a really dark finish like this. And it's going to lighten up a little bit when you rub boil linseed oil on it, which is what I'm doing now. Um, but it's going to stay pretty dark, okay? So this is basically what you're going to end up with. It's going to transfer a little bit onto your gloves, as you can see here. But it's not going to get too much uh, lighter. So basically, it's going to look like this when it's done okay and this is pretty much it. it looks really cool i really like that dark finish on this one it gives it a nasty medieval look um which i really like and that's basically what this one's going to turn out like so if you have a dark handle like this and you put the dye directly on and you didn't use the fuel alcohol like i did and it's dark and you're like wes i don't really want it that dark i got you covered what you need to do is is take a paper towel or a rag with uh, some fuel alcohol on it. And here's what you can do. You can literally take this handle and swipe it down. Okay. And kind of rub it in a little bit. And what you're doing is, is that you're basically just taking off some of the finish and you'll get a, dark, a lighter color, okay? Kind of play around with it a little bit. It, give yourself some depth in certain areas. You can leave some areas darker, leave some areas lighter, and you just kind of go through and rub this handle with this uh, fuel alcohol here, and it will take the dark layer out, depending on how much you, of course, you know, rub on it, and, um, how much isopropyl alcohol or, or fuel alcohol, I'm sorry, you put on it. Don't use isopropyl alcohol, guys. It's got too much water in it. Use the fuel alcohol. And uh, you will get a lighter finish, okay? Like this. And it will lighten up the finish and it won't be as dark. And you'll be able to see some of that wood grain, which is what I'm doing here. So you can definitely do it like this. Doesn't look completely uh uniform which is what i like guys i like a little bit of um you know my finish to be broken up in places gives it a little bit of depth and uh you know pretty cool looking so you can try that too and you can play around with it get different shades by adding uh, uh the fuel alcohol in certain spots uh rubbing it a little bit lighter or harder and it'll give you different shades and give you some depth you can try that out too guys and then once it's dry 
you can come back and add your boiled linseed oil on the handle, okay? Just kind of rub it in and then get all over the handle as much as possible. And there we go. All right, guys, so that wraps up the five throwing axes that I wanted to refinish for you guys on camera. Um, it turned out really well. Some of them are a little darker, okay? But I will tell you that in person, it's not that dark. I'm fighting the sun, and I'm trying to get a better angle so it'll bring out some of that grain. I'll take some pictures uh, later and roll them in now so you can really see what they look like up close and the grain and everything and the color. Like I said before, if you wanted to make it a little bit lighter and bring out more of the grain, you could just mix the dye with some fuel alcohol and it won't go on as dark. If you put the dye straight on, it goes on really dark, but I really like that dark look on my handle, especially because when I'm using them for throwing, I'm using them in videos and it's not really, you know, people see the color, but not the grain. So it's really just for showing people the color of the handles when I'm throwing, when I'm making my uh, shorts and when I'm making videos for TikTok. However, I did show you a way if you put the dye directly on that you can go back with some fuel alcohol and a paper towel and just kind of wipe it down over and over again. We'll lighten it and bring out more of the grain so it's not as dark. I will give you guys some information on that dye. That dye is extremely hard to seal, okay? Yes, you can put a polyurethane over top of it and seal it in, and you can do all kinds of different things, but if you want to try to keep it natural, you have to put coat after coat after coat of boiled linseed oil on that, rubbing it out with a towel or a paper towel until it doesn't transfer onto the paper towel. It takes some time, it does. And if you don't do it correctly, when that handle gets wet, you're going to get transfer onto your hands so pay attention to that.
Dye isn't my first choice for handles because it takes so much time to seal it so it doesn't transfer on your hands, especially when the handle gets wet. But it is an option if you want to do that. Um, it just takes a lot of aftercare to try to build up those coats of bull linseed oil to prevent that dye from coming back out. But you can do it. And then of course we got the burn finish with the Danish oil. Guys, you don't have to burn your handle either. You can just use Danish oil. That works really well too. But I hope you guys had a good time. I hope it was informative. I hope you got some ideas and, and I was able to give you a look at different uh, colors when it comes to that dye and how it takes the different handles. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed some of the different um, designs I put into the handles, especially that first uh, Husqvarna Carpenter's Axe, that uh, the big divots in the handle. I thought it was cool looking, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys enjoyed the axes. Thanks for sticking around to the end and watching everything with me. But until next time, guys, See you.